We are the Bowtie Travelers, welcome to the Palace of Persia. possession of France. Versailles, former royal residence and center of government, now a world heritage site is a magnificent testament to the lavishness of French royalty as well as a symbol of the inequality that incited the French Revolution. The building of the uh, Palace of Versailles started with Louis the 13th and it was made magnificent and famous during Louis the 14th the son king king Louis the 14th the son king of France transformed this rural stretch of Ile de France into a grand palace in 1682 when he relocated the French government Despite centuries of turmoil, the palace is now a well-preserved world heritage site visited by millions. Travelers from across the globe flock to see Versailles legendary gardens, the Hall of Mirrors, and the quirky Queen's Hamlet. Being the world's largest royal domain, the domain comprises, amongst other things, the palace itself, the gardens, and the Trianon palaces and Marie Antoinette's estates. This beautiful palace started with Louis the 13th. It was just a small hunting lodge of stones and bricks. Louis the 13th expanded this palace. From a hunting lodge and private retreat for Louis the 13th and his family. Louis XIV transformed the palace into a immense and extravagant complex surrounded by stylized French and English gardens. Every detail of its construction was intended to glorify the king. Today the palace contains 2,300 rooms spread over 63,154 square meters. Visitors to the palace usually start their tour inside the palace from the medium apartment. Even though 
those apartments had different purposes under different kings. The most well-known use of those apartments was to serve as private rooms to few of Louis XV's daughters. Louis XV who succeeded his great grand father Louis XIV and his queen Marie Lechinska had six daughters who were called Mesdames of France. Only two of them, Adelaide and Victoire, remained until the revolution since neither princess married and both lived to an old age. The royal chapel was the fifth and final chapel built in the palace since the reign of Louis XIII. The architecture of the palace with its imposing colonnades on the first floor was inspired by antiquity. The vaulted ceiling is dedicated to the Holy Trinity. The king's state apartment, a prestigious series of seven rooms, with an ancient Greek mythology theme used for hosting the sovereign's official act. The Hercules room was the last room to be built by Louis XIV at the end of his reign to showcase the large painting by Paolo Veronese. The Hall of Plenty served as a refreshment room where coffee, wines and liqueurs were served on a sideboard during evening gatherings. The Diana room, in which the central selection of the ceiling depicts Diana, goddess of hunt and sister of Apollo, watching over navigation and hunting scenes. The March room marked the start of the king's private apartment. It was used as a guard room, making its dedication to the god of war highly appropriate. King's bedroom. Originally, this room opened into the Hall of Mirrors, but when Louis XIV moved his bedchamber to this very room, the three arches were walled up. The bedroom is facing the rising sun. The war room, tribute to the military victories, leads to the Hall of Mirrors. The Hall of Mirrors, the most famous room in the palace. This room captures admiration of all who see it. The mirrors are placed opposite to the large windows which gives the sense of symmetry. The extravagance of building a room with mirrors may seem strange to us today, but during the 17th century, mirrors were extremely expensive. The Gallery of Great Battles is the largest room in the palace, 120 meters long and 13 meters wide. It covers almost the entire first floor of the South Wing. It was intended to glorify French military history from the victory in Tolbiac by Clovis to the victory in Wagram by Napoleon in 
we are at the gardens of Versailles. The garden covers around 800 hectares of land. The gardens are beautiful and when walking through the gardens you can listen to those beautiful classical music. Just feeling like I'm back to the time of Louis the 14th who made this palace magnificent and famous. In 1661, Louis the 14th entrusted Andre Le Nôtre with the creation and renovation of the gardens of Versailles, which he considered just as important as the palace. Creating the gardens was a monumental task. Large amounts of soil had to be shifted to level the ground. The gardens of Versailles are huge. The gardens themselves have many attractions. Two hours walking through the garden it's not enough. Trees were brought in from different regions of France. Thousands of men, sometimes even entire regiment, took part in this immense project. Made of bronze, marble and lead, the 386 works of art in Versailles, including 221 decorating the gardens, make it the biggest open-air sculpture museum in the world. So on the weekend, from late spring to early autumn, all the fountains in the gardens are on full play and it looks magnificent. It's really, really great. Water features of all kinds are an important part of French gardens, even more so than plants, designs and groves. Fountains, vases and statues adorn these little parks within the woods where the kings would often go for walks. During the musical fountains show, be prepared for a long wait to access the gardens as large crowds of visitors flock the domain to experience this place of breathtaking, almost overwhelming architectural and horticultural beauty. They definitely knew how to spend good The time. infinite variety and ingenuity of entertainment provided at court makes Versailles a venue for ever more monumental, extraordinary and fantastical parties and shows. The ballroom was created by Le Nôtre between 1680 and 1683. This circular enclosure of waterfalls has been used for the dances and concerts that took place there during the reign of Louis XIV. The grove was designed as an amphitheater of greenery. In late afternoon, all the fountains are shut down and visitors are advised to make their way to the fountain of Neptune to admire the force and variety of the jets of water playing over the sculptural groups. With 99 jets of water, the Neptune fountain is the largest of all the fountain pools in the gardens of Versailles. Colonnade Grove, a circular peristyle with a diameter of 40 meters, 
is supported by 32 pilasters. Leaping fountains surround the peristyle. In the center, the sculpture of the abduction of Proserpine by Pluto. This is Greek mythology. Louis XV decided to build a new palace in the middle of his gardens. The new palace has been built to be large enough to house the king and some of its entourage. The Treno estate with the Grand and Petit Treno. Louis XVI gave the Petit Treno as a gift to his young bride, Marie Antoinette. A visit to the Petit Trianon is a moving immersion in the everyday life of Marie Antoinette, a deeply human queen. Often accused of frivolity, she would come to a tragic end during the French Revolution. She was executed by a guillotine on the place of the La Revolution on the 16th of October 1793. Hamlet, Hameau de la Reine, consisted of a variety of different cottages and buildings, all built around a small lake. Votre toast, je peux vous le rendre, Seigneur, Seigneur, car avec les soldats. The Grand Train served as a refuge for Louis XIV who could escape from the constant bustle of the court while surrounding himself with more select company. Oh, 
Amor, amor, tato, tore, 